So, I don't think I'm the only one that really wants to see regional variants and evolutions return in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And I'm pretty sure we're not going to be disappointed. Gimmicks in Pokemon may come and go, but I think alternate forms for older Pokemon are here to stay. So today, I'm giving you what I feel are the top 10 best possible Pokemon to get regional variants in our first set of Gen 9 games. All of these regional variants were drawn by Alicia Bell, so be sure to give her a follow over on Twitter. Oh, and don't worry, I'll be doing an evolutions video in the future, so be on the lookout for that. Anyways, without further delay, let's get into this list. Starting off this list, we have a real underdog that doesn't get much love in Crabominable. I think the idea of it being a fighting ice type that's based on the Yeti Crab was pretty good, but then falls really short when you consider the fact that the ice typing is a pretty bad typing to add to any Pokemon, as well as the fact that in the only games that the line was available in, you couldn't evolve into it until late game really dampening the experience with it. Now that Scarlet and Violet will let us travel the region freely, I think conditions like that will be virtually non-existent going forward. But that's not why we're here. I think we should have fun with this Pokemon in this region, and give it a new form and lore. So, here it is. Yeah, this is just plain awesome. The inspiration behind this design comes from the Basahawan, a wood-dwelling creature from Basque mythology. These creatures are described as benevolent giants that are akin to being a guardian for the woods that they live in. So that made me go from fighting ice type to fairy grass type. Here's how I think this form change happened lore-wise. Crabrawler of Scarlet and Violet's region were always looking for a fight. But one day, one traveled into the woods and found inner peace within itself through nature, triggering its evolution into this more whimsical and gentle version of Crabominable. For stats, I think going real simple here is the trick. Just swap its physical and special stats around with each other and you're good to go. I mean, I could go the bulky defensive route, which might even make more sense regarding the lore. But I picture it more as a Pokemon that has immense strength to protect the woods it lives in, rather than using it in a brutal way. Crabominable is still slow, of course, so it might not be the best Pokemon for everyone to use. But having an extremely powerful special pull to choose from is never bad. You're looking at stab moves like Energy Ball, Giga Drain, Moonblast, and even Geomancy. Yeah, I know it's Xerneas' signature move, but a Pokemon like this absolutely deserves it. Coming in at number 9, we have Musharna. This line is definitely really interesting, as it was inspired from this character in the Gen 1 games hoping for a pink Pokemon with a floral pattern. But more than that, it's inspired from a Japanese yokai known as the Baku. The reason why it's interesting is that despite being very different in appearance and execution, that's basically the origin behind the Hypno line. Not saying multiple kinds of the same Pokemon can't exist, but the thing that bothers me here is that both lines are psychic types. Understandably so, since both deal with dreams and whatnot, but it just made me want something else for it. So after digging around, there's some more information about these dream-eating creatures. In Chinese mythology, these creatures are known as the Mo, a chimeric creature that ate nothing but iron and copper and could ward off evil. So we have a few different type combinations we could work with here. I think no matter what, it would need to be still type. Warding off evil could come in the form of keeping the psychic type or going with the fairy type. But there's another interesting thing the Mo can do. Apparently, its urine can dissolve iron into water. So perhaps steal poison? I don't know how Game Freak would appropriately write that bit into its lore, but it sure is something interesting. No matter what typing this thing would end up with, I think it would be a physical attacker, and would have a plethora of moves, stab and coverage alike. Iron Head, Psychic Fangs, Play Rough, and Gunk Shot would all be really cool moves to have on a really cool regional variant concept like this. Mm -hmm. 
Next, we have a pretty underrated Gen 3 Pokemon at the plate in Claydol. I think Claydol is such an interesting Pokemon, and perhaps a regional variant would give it a boost in terms of popularity. Now, Claydol are said to have been made by primitive humans through mud and a mysterious ray of light that gave it life. So who's to say other primitive humans didn't do the same around the world, just with different materials? This original Claydol would be a grass psychic type, and would earn this typing by being carved from old tree stumps rather than mud and clay. I like this idea because it's short, sweet, and to the point. Again, nothing changes about the lore, just the people that crafted its body. If anything, this would add more to its lore because of this mysterious light seen around the world, birthing the clay doll we all know today. For its stats, let's go with swapping both physical attack with special defense and defense with special attack. I think making it a mixed attacker that deals better physical attacks is good for a Pokemon like this. Can't go wrong with a nice wood hammer and zen headbutt in my opinion. It might be on the more simplistic side, but I like the idea behind this clay doll, and hope we can see something like this in Scarlet and Violet. Who knows, maybe we could get one through a side quest where we have to make it and bring it to life ourselves. That would be pretty sick. At number 7, we have Tentacruel. It's a Pokemon that I always want to try and use myself, but just can't ever recommend to anyone else due to availability in-game and there being much better options out there. I hope this large open world that we can explore in any direction we want will change that. And perhaps we could get a Tentacruel like this. Yeah, this bad boy is pretty dangerous and will mess you up with that fire and poison typing. The concept of this form comes from the barrel jellyfish, which can be found in the Mediterranean Sea, and the mushroom clouds that you see from the likes of atomic bomb detonations in volcanoes. Nothing too complex about this design's concept, but it turned out so wonderfully when you see the visual similarities these things have. In terms of stats, let's do some real reconstruction. Let's go with 70 HP, 50 attack, 75 in both defenses, 125 special attack, and 120 speed. Not too fragile, and it's fast and effectively. Stats like that are definitely something worthy of making it to a best team, depending on how Fue Coco turns out, of course. Eruption, Burn Up, Poison Jab, and Waterfall would all be solid choice of moves on Tentacruel. You know, one of the worst things about coming up with concepts like these is the fact that I usually love them all so much, and they likely will never exist, breaking my heart tremendously. Oh well, Tentacruel can live in our dreams, and that'll just have to be good enough. Ending our first half of the list is Cloyster. Now, I know we already saw Shelter in the trailer, but when has that ever stopped Game Freak from giving the final evolution some love? And I'm telling you guys, dang it, Cloyster needs some. And a Spanish-based region is the perfect place to introduce this concept. A ghost ice-type Cloyster. Why ghost, you ask? Well, I'll tell ya. You see, Spain has been one of the largest producers of flat oysters in Europe for many years. So, I think you see where I'm going with this. Shelter in this region were viewed as delicacies, resulting in their demise. But the sheer malice they harbored brought them back to life in the form of this cloister. Pretty spooky, huh? It might be morbid, but god, I love coming up with origins like this. This cloister variant will definitely be a bit of a glass cannon, like there was ever any doubt it would be. The only changes I see myself making here is 70 in defense, and then spreading that 110 left over evenly into attack and speed, giving it 150 base attack and 125 speed. Yeah, you don't want to mess with this thing. To make it even more interesting, let's give it a unique ability I'm calling Food Poisoning, or what I like to call Taco Bell. If any bite-based moves are used on Cloyster, its attacker will take recoil damage. I think that's a good message to Cloyster's opponents. Take a bite out of me and face the consequences. Starting the next half of the list, we've got some Gen 5 love coming through with Chandelure. Now, this variant concept is actually going to be inspired by the games themselves. What I mean by that is how the games are seemingly based on the future versus the past. 
So what if regional variants in these games match that concept, and we get both ancient and futuristic based forms for Pokemon? In comes Chandelure. The line is based on a candle, an oil lamp, and of course, a chandelier. Which are all timey ways of lighting. Well, how about we go towards the future and look at this electric steel type chandelier. This thing is pretty freaking cool looking. As you can see, the main inspiration for this Pokemon comes from Tesla coils. I know those are an older form of illumination by today's standards, but they've always looked so sci-fi and awesome. The lore for how this version came into existence could simply be from a mad scientist trying to recreate a better, more efficient version of the Pokemon for lighting purposes. For stats, I actually don't think any changes are necessary. I mean, the scientists just wanted to create a better form of illumination through them and that's it. For an ability, I think Levitate is the way to go, leaving it only weak to fighting in fire. For moves, you gotta have Discharge, Flash Cannon, and even the likes of Psychic and Signal Beam for good measure. The great inventor Nikola Tesla once said, the present is theirs. The future for which I really worked is mine. I don't know what that has to do with this Chandelure, but he sure said that. So let's move on to the next one. In the fourth spot, we have another Gen 3 Mon making an appearance. It's none other than Absol, a really popular Pokemon. So it's surprising that it only ever got a Mega Evolution and that's it. So I think we'll change that here today. What I'm envisioning is another game theme based design. How about we go with a steel psychic type cyberpunk Absol. Known as the disaster Pokemon, people have always been afraid of it as it always appeared to bring natural disasters along with it. The reality is that Absol simply wants to warn people of the impending doom they were all about to face. Well, since that's documented in the Pokemon world, people would surely learn better and view Absol as a blessing rather than a curse. But what if it could be better? I'm talking about increasing its ability to foretell disasters via cybernetic augmentation, making it a nearly omniscient supercomputer. Look, some of these may be messed up, but that's the real world, baby. Human sucks sometimes. For stats, I'm going really gimmicky with this one. 54 HP, 5 attack, 60 in both defenses, 85 in special attack, and 201 in speed. Yeah, I went this simply because Regieliki has base 200 speed. Assuming this form is created solely for its ability to quickly detect and predict catastrophic events, they needed it to make it even faster than the fastest Pokemon alive. They couldn't leave it totally defenseless, so that's pretty much the only reason other stats got anything. I mean, hey, if it's attacked and breaks down, they can always make a new one, right? Yeah, that's pretty dark, even for me, the guy that said it. So let's just move on. Taking the bronze medal as Arbok. The form takes inspiration from the Latastes Viper, a pretty neat venomous snake in Spain that has a little bit of an upturned nose. So I saw that and thought, hey, that kind of looks like it could be protection for its face. And so Alicia took it a step further and based it off of the Mo Ryan, a combat helmet used between the 16th and 17th century in Spain. Now, of course, we could have gone the poison steel route, but we've done so many steel types in this video already. So instead, it's getting the rock poison treatment, since that's a very cool type combination. And I just like the idea of another rock snake blessing the franchise. Stats are as follows, 60 HP, 105 attack, 100 in defense, 15 in special attack, 50 in special defense, and 93 in speed. I think that's pretty fair, all things considered. Strong physical and offense and defense, decent HP, quick but not too quick, but will get bodied in its special stats. Moves aren't anything special here. Just imagine an Arbok with decent rock moves and you're good to go. Honestly, while this might not be the most in-depth lore-wise, its design makes up for that and more. In the penultimate spot, we have our last Gen 3 Pokemon on the list being Salamence. Such a cool Pokemon that I feel Game Freak may never do anything with its design to avoid tainting it. What's that? 
something about a croissant? I have no idea what you could possibly be talking about. Anyways, here's what I'm thinking. Don't want to change the design too much. Let's just give you all more of the same then. I'm envisioning a three-headed salamence with long serpent-like necks. This would be based off of the head in Suhei, a mythological creature from Basque mythology. The two additional heads would take the place of Salamence's wings, grounding it and taking away its flying type. So you might be asking, Mystic, how is taking away one of its typings good enough for a regional variant? Well, I'll tell you. You give it Protean. Any attack you can think of, it will take on as its own power, wreaking havoc on the competition. As for stats, I think they're perfectly fine the way they are. I know this might not be the craziest concept in the world, but I think it works. You just take the badass that Salamence is and simply control C, control V it. And finally, in the number one spot is a concept you all might be familiar with if you watched my all unused dual typings video. We've got my dreams come true, Bug Dark Ariados in the flesh, with one of the best designs, period. Honestly, I might cry, because this design is just so good. Just like how I described in that video, this Ariados is based on the Cricket Bat Orb Weaver, a very creepy spider that can be found in that region of the world. From the color palette to its all-seeing eye on its abdomen, this is the best representation of a Bug Dark type. End of discussion. Imagine traversing the region late at night. You head into the darkness just to see this eye start glowing. And once you do, it's too late. It ensnares you, and your only hope is to be saved by someone brave enough to stand up to this thing. Well, that's the lore anyways. Stats-wise, the best I could do for it was 60 HP, 100 attack, 70 in defense, 20 in special attack, 60 in special defense, and 90 in speed. It's quick and can hurt you, but it's pretty frail, all things considered. But don't let that comfort you, because it's got great moves to mess you up with. Poison Jab, Leech Life, Crunch, and Shadow Sneak. All fantastic moves for a fantastic Pokemon. I have to say, of all the fake Pokemon I've ever had designed, this is easily one of my favorites, without a doubt. Well, that's going to do it for my list of the 10 best regional variants for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Tell me, what did you think of these concepts? Did you like them? And if so, which were your favorites? I'd love to hear from you all in the comment section below. Be sure to also tell me some Pokemon you'd love to see get regional variants in these games, as I'm sure I'm really interested to see what you all come up with. Welcome back to the outro, folks, your favorite part of the video. Thank you for enjoying another Mystic Umbreon video. We made it through the end of the 8th generation, and now we begin the long trek into late 2022 where Pokemon Scarlet and Violet await us. It's a whole new world we'll live in, but we still gotta catch them all. However, there's still a ton of videos to do and experiences to have until then. If you're interested in more Mystic content, check out my TikTok and the Mystic Umbreon Shorts YouTube channel. If we get the 10k followers on TikTok, I'll be doing a viewer's choice video. If you like Genshin Impact, check out my Genshin channel Tevachinary. So if you all enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. See you next time.